Okay, so I did go to Boston finally, and I should have gone before my friend got pregnant. That's all I'm going to say about the matter. Although she's going to be a wonderful mom, perfect, and I'm very happy for her. And she's a very beautiful person. Her and her husband are beautiful, beautiful people. Anyways, I did go and I got to see like Harvard Square and Boston Commons and it was nice. It was cool. It reminded me of Europe walking around with the brick sidewalks and constant movement of masses of people. All very fashionable. The ladies had some very sexy footwear. I don't know how they walked around in that stuff, but maybe if I lived there, I would understand. It'd all be worth it. So, oh, and I ate at this place, and I don't know how to pronounce it, but so I'm not going to. I'm not even going to try. And uh, I ate at that place, like, almost every single day that I was there. It was good. But, yeah. And I got to see my friend Pam from Houston. She came up, too, and it was really, really good to see her because I don't really get the chance to see her often and she is such a pleasant person as me and Tasha were discussing how wonderful she is to be around because she's so laid back. Oh, you're wondering what I'm doing. I'm putting wasabi on my tuna and salmon sushi. I have to multitask. I've got a busy life here. Anyways, um, that was sarcasm. Okay, so I did not get stung by a rattlesnake when I came back. I did go look for this rattlesnake that supposedly lives here. I have not seen this, but everybody talks about it. Oh, the big rattlesnake, it lives in your tree and it goes down here and then it goes here. They say that it kills the birds. I see the baby birds that are about to die, but they fall down from the tree. They're about to die. Anyways, but no, I never see the rattlesnake. I went hunting for him in the dark, which was kind of stupid, but at this point, what's it matter? I didn't find the rattlesnake. And here we are. And today the high was like 108 in Tucson, but I wasn't in Tucson today. I was up near Phoenix near White Canyon Wilderness and Devil's Canyon should you choose to look at it on a map or see Google Images. And yes, that area was around 114 degrees. So, um, yeah. So here I am eating sushi. And what else was I gonna say in this video? After coming back from Boston, I wrote a note to Wes titled Factors of Production, and I'm going to read it here now. I'd like to take a moment to briefly, summarily discuss the factors of production. Recently, I've been granted a newfound insight into parenthood from my dearest friend Tasha. While this is not the time to delve into specifics learned during my visit with her, this is a time of newly gleaned thought opportunities. I have made a solemn decision to myself to not have children until not only do the yin and the yang come to equal ratios, oh no, but the ratio, the balance is on the correct side, the patient side. As a female, I've always had the embedded knowledge of inevitable pregnancy and child re uh, rearing swimming around in my thoughts. The factors have changed over time as I myself have grown. For a long time, I would say things like, I want to be a certain age, or I want to be young enough to still be fit, or young, I want to have a savings account, I want to be with the right man, blah, blah, blah. I realized only recently that even though those things all begin with I want, that really very little, if anything, was about me. It was about the child. I wanted these things for the child's well-being. No longer is this thought process one that instills self-confidence. 
I see now that even if all the factors being right, I am still the largest factor of all. Remove all possibility of motherhood, if only for a moment, and what would I want from my life? All the things that I feel would give me fulfillment and happiness will not go away if I must provide these opportunities for another person. There are things that I need in order to be happy and complete, and those things aren't as simple as the traditional American dream. The moral of the story is until I have a little left of until I have little left of my own desires except to see life through a child's eyes and have the patience required to essentially live vicariously through them, I'm not going, I'm not giving into this instinctual drive. My body screams to me to make a baby. As I've gotten older, the closer to being a mother you'd think I'd feel. For instance, being or feeling more ready. However, it's been just the opposite. This is being stated for myself and for you to Wes. Not to YouTube, but yeah. So I go on and I say some really sweet things. And then I tell him that we must live our lives and that hopefully you know we'll do some other stuff but we have to live our lives for ourselves and not for somebody else and anyways that was my factors of production essay which I think will make him laugh and the second part of the note was the lyrics to this song horse with no name okay if you haven't heard this song you should definitely look it up it's by the band America and it's called Horse With No Name. It's a very good song. So that being said, I am now going to add the soy sauce to my sushi here. I'm going to have dinner. I'm going to go for a swim. And that's it. So, yeah. Bye.